Kraft presents The Great Gildersleeve. Yeah. The Kraft Cheese Company, makers of parquet margarine and a complete line of famous quality food products, presents Harold Perry as The Great Gildersleeve. Kraft brings you The Great Gildersleeve every week at this time, written by John Whedon and Sam Moore. We'll hear from The Great Gildersleeve in just a moment. But first, let me tell you about the grand cheese food that gets such a royal welcome from shoppers every time a new supply arrives at their favorite food store. Yes, it's your old favorite, Pabstet, the delicious golden cheese food of a hundred uses. Pabstet, an economical, nutritious cheese food, is such a wonderful help in preparing wartime meals, we just wish there was a whole lot more of it to go around. Pabstet, you see, makes those smooth, appetizing cheese sauces that add such nourishing goodness to macaroni or noodles, cooked vegetables and fish prepared in dozens of tempting ways. And Pabstet also spreads, slices, and toasts to perfection. So naturally, it's in big demand, too, for sandwiches and for crackers with dessert. So ask for Pabstet and buy it when you can. Look for the round, flat package, the delicious golden cheese food, Pabstet. Now let's join our friend the great Gildersleeve. The ups and downs of his campaign for mayor, plus the complications of his passion for Miss Eve Goodwin, have reduced him to a bulky shadow. Yesterday afternoon, he inadvertently announced his engagement to Miss Goodwin at an Arbor Day rally. And now, as he drops in at Phoebe's drugstore, he's in the mood to accept congratulations. Mm-hmm. Love is the sweetest. Commissioner Gildersleeve. Oh, hi, Floyd. Who's taking care of the barbershop? Closed up. Shave McCorder for the day, Commissioner. <laughs> have a soda? No, Floyd, you have one. I'm buying today. Where's Peavy? Out and back there, making up some of my special hair tonic. Guaranteed to grow hair in a pool ball. <laughs> now, if you only find some stuff that'll grow hair in a human skull. I use it myself. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Come on, what do you have, Floyd? Well, if you're buying, I'll have a cigar. What's the occasion, Mr. Gildersleeve? Haven't you heard? I'm engaged to be married. Well, congratulations. You Say, didn't you just get out of one? What do you mean? Well, weren't you engaged to that southern party with oh, the... Oh, that was some time ago, Floyd. This is different. This is the real thing. Well, if you're satisfied, why should I kick? Who's the, uh... Miss Eve Goodwin. The school principal? Never would have thought of her. Why not? I don't know. I had a teacher once that I wondered about, but a principal... She's a very lovely woman, Floyd. Oh, sure. I wasn't casting any asparagus on the lady. Asparagus. <laughs> Five gallons on the last tickle Christmas. Hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Hello, Peavy. Have a cigar. Well, I rarely use tobacco, Mr. Gildersleeve. Is this some kind of an occasion? Sure is, Peavy. Commissioner's gone out and got himself engaged again. <laughs> so I hear. Yes, Peavy. I'm engaged to the nicest woman in Summerfield. Come on, have a cigar. Well, as I say, I seldom smoke cigars, but just to be a good fellow, I'll ring one up. Oh, you're a prince, Peavy. (laughs) Now get out the box so Floyd and I can smoke. Yes, sir. Your uh, regular brand? No, let's have the three for a half model. Three for a half it is. Thanks, Commissioner. I think you should be very happy, Mr. Gildersleeve. Miss Goodwin always seemed like a nice, wholesome, substantial woman. Wholesome? Peavy, you make me sick. You haven't got a spark of romance in your whole system. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> well, don't call my fiance wholesome. Oh, no offense. I'm very happy if you've met Miss Wright. Was it uh, love at first sight, would you say? Instantaneous. You can always... Well, get... Judge Hooker, come on in, join the party, Judge. Thank you. Gildersleeve's given out cigars for his engagement. Yeah, that's right, Judge. Have a cigar? I've already offered my congratulations, but I'll accept the cigar. I wish you a long life of happiness, and I think Eve's a lucky girl. Oh, thank you, Horace. The commissioner claims it was love at first sight, Judge. You take any stock in that? There's no such thing as love at first sight, Floyd. Love is a matter of habit. Habit? Love is not like brushing your teeth, Horace. Well, I think there's something in what he says. There. Floyd's a married man, Gildy. He ought to know. All right, Floyd, what's your theory? Well, I'll tell you the way it happened with me. 
I was gone with the wife for about six months, I guess. You know, she seemed like a good kid. Her family knew my family. She was fairly good looking at that time. Hadn't started to spread out, you know. <laughs> but to me, she was strictly a good time. Nothing serious. Few laughs, a little necking once in a while. And one night, I took her to a dance someplace. And when we were going home after, there was some moonlight or something. Before I knew it, I asked her to marry me. I didn't have any more intention to marry that girl than... Well, as soon as the words were out of my mouth, I could have bit my tongue off. That's very interesting, Floyd, but what's your theory about love? My theory is that it's an accident, and there ought to be a law against it. <laughs> You're just cynical. You can't convince me. Well, me either, Mr. Gildersay. What do you think, Peavy? Do you think love is just a habit? I think love is a miracle. <laughs> oh? What do you mean by that? Well, I'll tell you. The minute I laid eyes on Mrs. Peavy, I was swept off my feet. There you are, fellas. Tell us how it happened, Peavy. Well, we met at a picnic. There were several other oh, people. Oh, I'd never fall for a girl at a picnic. They make you do all the work. Yes. Hush, Floyd. Like the fire, boil the water. Let Peavy tell his story, Floyd. Bury the garbage. It's a lot of work at a picnic. Uh, go ahead, Peavy. Well, Mrs. Peavy was the only stranger in the group at this picnic. So four or five of us young fellows were meeting her for the first time. As soon as I saw her, I knew she was the girl for me. It was like an electric current, huh? Well, no, I would... Uh, yes, my George, it was. <laughs> it was like an electric current, and it sure filled me full of ginger. <laughs> you know how young fellows are. I commenced to show off, climbing trees, jumping across the creek. Had on a brand new pair of trousers, but I just didn't give a hang. That's it, Peavy. That's the miracle. Oh, no, that's not the miracle. The miracle was that I was the only fellow there that fell in love with her, and I was the only one she married. That was the miracle. Uh, I don't believe it, Peavy. Now, wait a minute, Floyd. Uh, what is it you don't believe, Floyd? I don't believe it was any miracle. Did you clean the pots after the picnic? Well, yes, I believe I did. Did you bury the garbage? Well, yes, I recall that very distinctly. Well, there goes your miracle. A woman always picks out the man that's got his nose to the grindstone, and boy, does she keep it there. Yep. You'll find out, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, Bertie, I do hope it will turn out well. Do you think it will? This is the first time in my life I've ever made a cake. Now, honey, just take it easy. Take it easy. Don't get yourself in an uproar. Just do like I tell you. Put it in the oven now. One side, Leroy. Oh, sorry. Leroy, for goodness sake. I said I was sorry. You have to hang around the kitchen. Why don't you go out and play? I don't feel like it. I don't know why it is. Every time I bake a cake, Leroy has to be underfoot. One side now. I know what Leroy's hanging around for. Here it is, Leroy. You can lick the bowl now. No, thanks, Bertie. What? No, thanks. Leroy, honey, what's the matter? Nothing. I just feel like punching somebody in the nose, that's all. Well, what on earth? What does he have to go and get married for? Why can't she leave him alone? Who? Why can't who? Oh, Lady Goodwin. We were doing all right till she came along. Now, Leroy, you had not to feel like that. Well, I do. Who wants to marry an old principal? Well, it looks like your uncle does. Besides, she's not old. She's not even as old as Uncle Mort. What's wrong with marrying a principal, anyway? It's like marrying a cop. <laughs> Leroy, do this. Leroy, do that. Leroy, stay after school. Leroy. I don't think you're very fair to Miss Goodwin. Was she fair to me? Made me clean up the whole playground where I didn't even throw it. Whitey threw it. I don't know what you're talking about. And anyway... Ask Whitey. He admits it. He admits it. Anyway, I like her. You would. I don't know that I think she's just the person for Uncle Mort, but I like her. What do you think, Bertie? You don't want to marry her, do you, Bertie? Well, you have to look at it this way. There's all kinds of women. Now, Miss Ransom, she's one kind of woman. Miss Goodwin, she's a little different. It's up to the man. Mr. Gillsleeve knows what he's doing. I hope. <laughs> well, well, gosh, do we have to go through this every spring? <laughs> Last year it was Mrs. Ransom. This year is Miss Go... Oh, hi, Unc. I didn't hear you come in. Oh, uh, Mr. Gill, see you home early. Yes, I'm Archer. Early. Did I interrupt something? Oh, no, 
Oh, we, we were just talking. Yeah, just talking. I've been teaching Miss Marjorie how to bake a cake. Yeah, she's been teaching me how to bake a cake. Yeah, making a cake. <laughs> well, that's fine. <laughs> What's for dinner, Bertie, besides cake? Oh, something you like. Uh, good. Uh, well, um, how did it go today, Uncle Mort? Fine, fine. Uh, Bertie. Yes, sir? Bertie, I suppose the children have told you that I, uh, that I've decided to take the fatal plunge. I'm taking it again, as it were. Uh, oh, yes, sir. I-, I was just getting out to congratulate you. Uh, many happy returns, Miss Gilsleeve. <laughs> well, thank you, Bertie. Thank you. <laughs> you approve of this step, I trust. Oh, anything you want to do is all right with me. You know that, Mr. Gilsleeve. Uh, yes, I know that, Bertie. But I'd like to know what you really think of it. Oh, I think it's fine, Mr. Gilsleeve. I think it's fine, if you do. Oh. <laughs> Well, thank you. Of course, I don't know the lady, except the one time she came here to dinner. Yes, I must have her to dinner again soon. Perhaps tomorrow night, so we can all get acquainted. After all, we're going to see a lot of each other. <laughs> <laughs> I can't help noticing that you children haven't committed yourselves as yet. Marjorie, what do you think of all this? Oh, I think it's fine, Uncle Mort. I really do. I, I hope you'll be very happy, and I think you will. Well, I think we should be. After all, Miss Goodwin and I have many things in common, which should, uh, uh... Leroy, what do you think? Oh, I think it's fine. Fine, I think it's fine. You do, eh? Yeah, I think it's fine. Hmm. That's fine. Front door, I'll go. Come on, Marjorie. Let's get out of here so Bertie can get dinner. I've got to watch my cake. Oh, I'll watch it, honey. You run along. Oh, thanks, Bertie. But I baked it, remember? Don't worry. You'll get the credit. Hi. Hello, Leroy. Mrs. Ransom. Uh-oh. I suppose she's heard. Yeah, I'm glad to come over, Mrs. Ransom. Come in. Oh, thank you, Leroy. Is young Sure, Leroy? he's here. Let me take your coat, Mrs. Ransom. Hmm. Pretty polite all of a sudden. Uncle will be glad to see you. He was just saying, I wonder why Mrs. Ransom never comes over anymore. Yeah. What's the little devil up to now? <laughs> <laughs> oh, hello, Leela. <laughs> Hello, Marjorie. Frog Walton, I'm so happy for you. Happy? Hmm. I just heard the news just this morning. Of course, I had to hear it from Judge Hooker. Oh, I was going to call you, Leela. Oh, I understand. Gracious. You're much too busy to have any time for me. But I just couldn't wait to tell you how happy I am for both of you. I called Eve up right away. You did? Oh, we had the nicest child. I think she's a dear, Throckmorton. So refined. Oh, yes, Eve's very refined. And such a lady. I think you two should have a very interesting life together. Well, we plan to, of course. I'll bet the children are just thrilled about it, aren't you, Leroy? Yeah, it's great. (laughs) (laughs) Don't you think it's wonderful, Marjorie? Yes, I do. Uh, I tell you, I'm so excited about it, I want to give a party, Throckmorton, right away, an engagement party. Well, that's very nice of you, Leela, but... After all, who has a better right? I mean, think of all the parties that were given for us when we were engaged. (laughs) I think I ought to do something in return, and I'd love to. I love parties anyway. Well, I think I ought to speak to Eve first. She isn't much the party type. Oh, don't worry about Eve. I've already spoken to her. You have? Mm Mm-hmm. I invited her for tomorrow evening, and she said she'd love to come. Oh, Eve is wonderful. I've invited the judge, too. I thought we'd just make it, you know, kind of intimate, as long as we're all such old friends and all. Uh, What about the doctor? Uh, Dr. Hargrave? Oh, out of town again. You know these doctors. Sometimes I think all they really care about is microbes. Hi-ho, who wants to be a microbe? (laughs) Leela, by George, sometimes I... Sometimes I don't know. <laughs> well, I'll be expecting you tomorrow, then, Frogmorton. Uh, wait, I'll go to the door with you. Oh, thank you. I, uh... I just want to say, Leela. Yes, Frogmorton. Well, I think you've been a darn good sport about this whole thing, and I want you to know it. Oh, gracious, Frogmorton. I couldn't be happier for you, really. And I'd love giving a party. After all, it isn't every day you get yourself engaged. Not quite. (laughs) See you tomorrow. Uh, See you tomorrow. (laughs) Tomorrow. I wonder. It could be one of my bad days. 
Fred Gildersleeve will be with us again in just a few seconds. If you pack lunches for school-going children and hard-working grown-ups, surprise them someday this week with the appetizing cheddar cheese flavor of Pabstet. This delicious golden cheese food makes wonderfully good sandwiches. And, of course, Pabstet is also one of America's special mealtime favorites. It melts with luscious smoothness into a golden cheese sauce that's simply grand with macaroni, vegetables, eggs, or fish, and another main dish treats for a hungry family. Pabstet also slices perfectly to be served with desserts. Pabstead, in fact, has won a reputation as the cheese food of a hundred different uses. And it's wonderfully nourishing, too. Pabstead helps provide food energy, milk protein, milk minerals, riboflavin, and important vitamin A. So for delicious nourishing sandwiches and other mealtime treats, buy Pabstead whenever you can. Look for the round, flat package, the delicious golden cheese food, Pabstead. <laughs> Now let's return to the great Gildersleeve, who finds himself facing a delicate domestic problem. For the first time since the announcement of their engagement, Miss Goodwin is coming to the house, and Gildersleeve senses that Leroy is going to require a little coaching. The coaching is going on in Gildersleeve's bedroom as he cleans up for dinner. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yeah? Yeah, Come back here. I want to talk to you. What about? Well, I'd just like to talk to you, Leroy. Sit down on the bed there. Okay. Shoot. Well, uh, what I wanted to say, Leroy, was, uh... Is that the necktie I gave you? Yeah, what's the matter with it? Nothing. I wonder why I gave it to you. <laughs> yeah. What I was going to say, my boy... Yeah? Did you wash your neck? Sure. Yeah. Come here. Why, George, you did, didn't you? She's not going to get anything on me. Yeah. Who? Miss Goodwin. Yeah. Now, that's just what I want to talk to you about, young man. That attitude... You must realize that because Miss Goodwin is the principal of your school, she has certain duties to perform. It's her duty to be strict with you. Ye God, somebody's got to be strict with you. But you mustn't take that to mean that she doesn't like you. That's all right. I don't like her. (laughs) Uh, Let me put it this way, my boy. When Miss Goodwin's out of school, she's a different person. A very different person. And you must learn to think of her that way. You must learn to think of her as well as somebody who's... Very dear to me. Will you do that? Mm, I'll try. That's the boy. I know you will. You know, Leroy, you and I ought to get to know each other better. I've always been intending to spend more time with you. Are you going to tell me that you're marrying Miss Goodwin so that you can spend more time with me? (laughs) (laughs) I know how you feel, my boy. We've always been a pretty tight little corporation here. You and Marjorie and I. But I feel that the time has come now to expand a little bit. <laughs> we got to take a new partner into the firm. Why? Why? Well, uh, I don't know that I can explain why. Perhaps when you're older, you'll understand. When I'm older. That's right. When you're older, you'll understand a lot of things. When I'm older. Everything's going to happen when I'm older. For corn's sake, I might as well go to bed and stay there till I'm 21. <laughs> I know how you feel, my boy, but there are certain things, well, you just have to grow up to them. What things? Uh, When did you grow up to them? (laughs) I haven't got time to explain it all now, Leroy. Miss Goodwin will be here any minute. When she comes, I want you to be polite to her. You understand? I'll be polite. Don't worry. She's not going to get anything on me. I'll be polite to her. You'll be more than that. You'll be nice to her, you little squirt, or I'll give you a good fanny. You understand? Okay. Now stick in your shirt tail and let's go downstairs. Well, Eve, darling. Rockmorton. Why didn't they tell me you were here? I've only been here a few minutes. Uh, may I? Careful. Lipstick. <laughs> <laughs> You know, Eve, in my day, if a teacher used lipstick, they'd have her run out of town. Well, your day is over, thank goodness. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. (laughs) (laughs) I've just been having such a nice talk with Marjorie. You have a very tactful niece, Doc Morton. I have a very lucky uncle. Your uncle has very good taste. (laughs) Luck had nothing to do with it, did it, Eve? It was sheer determination. Yours or mine. (laughs) (laughs) Where's Leroy? Oh, he's upstairs. He'll be right down. Uh, Lee? 
Oh, Leroy. Who? <laughs> <laughs> uh, hurry down, my boy. Well, let's sit down, shall we? Dinner won't be ready for a few minutes. I'm looking forward to Mrs. Ransom's party this evening. I think it should be such fun. Yes, I hope so. Marjorie was telling me she baked her first cake yesterday. I think that's wonderful. Well, it wasn't wonderful, but it wasn't bad, was it, Uncle Mort? It was food for the gods, my dear. <laughs> you must teach me how sometime, Marjorie. Oh, I'd love to. It's very simple, really. You just take a cup of flour and... Uh, Marjorie, not right now, my dear. Oh, it's very simple. Uh, oh, here's Leroy. Come on in, my boy, and meet your future... Uh, uh, say hello to Miss Goodwin. Hello, Leroy. How do you do, Miss Goodwin? Well... <laughs> Won't you come over here and sit beside me? I'm quite comfortable here, thank you. I might crowd you. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> oh, there's plenty of room. Leroy, do as Miss Goodwin tells you. Oh, now, Doc Morton, that's no way to talk to a boy. Let him do as he pleases. Did you uh, have a good time this afternoon, Leroy? Yes, Miss Goodwin. What did you play? Baseball? No, Miss Goodwin. You didn't play baseball. Well, Tell Miss you... Goodwin what you did play. <laughs> yes, sir. We played commando. Oh, that sounds like fun. How do you play it? Oh, you just play it. <laughs> Tell her how you play it, Leroy. <laughs> yes, sir. Well, do you, you have foxholes? Do we have foxholes? Boy, you ought to see the one we got now. It's big enough. Yeah, we have foxholes. <laughs> Go on, Leroy. Miss Goodwin asked you a question. Answer it. Just a minute, talk, Martin. Leroy. Yes, Miss Goodwin? Come here a minute. Yes? I don't know that this is the place for it, Leroy, but I owe you an apology. What for? I found out who threw that paper wad in assembly. It wasn't you. Who was it? Paul Marks. You're still cold. (laughs) (laughs) Am I? Well, don't tell me who it was. It wasn't you, and I apologize. Miss Goodwin, I'll tell you something. Yes? I didn't actually throw it, but I wanted it up. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I'll forgive you, Leroy, on one condition. What's that? When we're out of school, don't call me Miss Goodwin. Well, what'll I call you? Well, call me Eve or anything you like, but not Miss Goodwin. I like to get out of school once in a while, too, you know. Okay, I'll do it. If you'll do something for me. What's that? Don't call me Leroy. The name is Leroy. No, young man. It's a deal. Oh, here's Bertie. Is dinner announced, Bertie? Come and get it. <laughs> uh, Bertie's a jewel, but she's no Emily Post. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we, uh, Leroy, come back here? I get to sit next to Miss Goodwin. No, sir, I do. Uh, happy little family. <laughs> You were wonderful. How do you mean, Clark Morton? Well, the way you handle the children. So tactful. They're very nice children. Well, it's a big load off my mind. Now, if things go well at Leela's... Well, if you're worried about it, perhaps we should have stayed at your house and been cozy. <laughs> How about it? Shall we tell Leela we couldn't make it? Oh, Clark Morton, I was joking. We can't possibly back out now. Come on. Oh, all right. How about a quick kiss? Just one before she comes. Lipstick. I don't mind. I like the taste. Well, I might. Rock Morton. This... Well, the happy couple. Here they are, George. Well, well, congratulations, Rock Morton. My profoundest sympathy, Eve. May all your troubles be little ones. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, Eve. The first hundred years are the hardest. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, brother, this is going to be worse than I thought. Leela, that's, I want to tell you, that's the finest homemade punch I ever tasted. It's simply delicious. Great. Oh, now y'all are just trying to turn my head. But my mother always told me a girl should be able to do one thing well. Well, I'm sure you have other accomplishments. Well, uh, I can cook a little. I used to wonder what Throckmorton could see in a silly little girl like me, and I finally decided it must be my cooking. <laughs> On my way downtown this afternoon, you I... Might... <laughs> you might just as well realize.
realize, Eve, that Throckmorton simply loves to eat. You know, one time I fed him some fried eggplant, and he ate so much he got the hiccups. <laughs> oh, Throckmorton, you pig. Now, Leela, please. Oh, this is fun, Throckmorton. Tell me some more things about him, Leela. Well, now, let me see. Oh, did he ever tell you about the time when he was a little boy and the little girl wanted to kiss him in Sunday school? Leela. <laughs> Throckmorton thought she wanted to wrestle. <laughs> My, how he's changed. Yeah. He is, please. <laughs> but, darling, I like to know things about your past. Then let me tell them to you. <laughs> Eve, have you ever seen that snapshot of Throckmorton, the one that was taken when he was a three-year-old baby? Now, Leela, I forbid it. He was all stomach. <laughs> <laughs> Throckmorton, I'd love to see the picture So would I You stay out of this, Hooker <laughs> Oh, please, we're just having fun Yes, that's all it is, Throckmorton Eve, tell me, does he ever Does he ever, invariably Sorry, <laughs> George, I don't have to stand for this Eve, has he ever sung Speak to Me of Love? Leela, is nothing sacred to you? Well, it can't be terribly sacred, Throckmorton. You've sung it to me. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, Hooker. <laughs> oh, Throckmorton, sing it for us now. No. Oh, come on. No, I don't want to sing it. Oh, come on, Throckmorton, sing it for us. Eve. He wants to be coaxed, girl. I do not. Throckmorton, won't you sing it for us, please? Pretty please? No, I will not. All right, ladies, I will sing it for you. What? Oh, what? Well, come good on, idea. the judge is going to sing. Music, please. I'll play for you, Joe. Speak to me of love. Oh. Say what I'm longing. <laughs> no. Why, George, I'm a jackass. <laughs> Women. <laughs> Floyd was right. Well, sir, Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve has learned his lesson. Throckmorton! Throckmorton, please, wait for me. What do you want? Darling, don't you see? Don't you understand what Leela was doing? You were just as bad as she was. She was trying to make you look silly. She was trying to make me lose my temper. Who wouldn't lose his temper? I'm not blaming you, darling. Only don't be mad at me, please. Will you forgive me? Well... I won't go back there. We don't have to. Isn't there anything else you'd like to do? Yeah. <laughs> TV was right after all. Love is a miracle. <laughs> Dear Diary, this will have to be a brief entry because here it is, 2 o'clock in the morning. How did it ever get to be so late? <laughs> and I thought this was going to be one of my bad days. <laughs> Good night, everybody. <laughs> Music heard on this program was directed by Clark Sweet. This is Ken Carpenter speaking for the Kraft Cheese Company, makers of Clark A. Margarine and a complete line of famous quality food products. Kraft invites you to listen in again next week for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. Enriched bread has an important place in almost every meal, and whether you prefer it as a crunch toast or as a plain slice, fresh cut from a tender, golden-crusted loaf, you're sure to enjoy it a whole lot more when you spread that delicious parquet margarine. Kraft makes parquet margarine. So naturally, you'd expect parquet to taste extra good, to have a fine, delicate flavor that satisfies. And remember, parquet is more than just a good-tasting spread. It's a splendid energy food, one of the very best you can eat. Equally important, parquet is fortified with vitamins. Kraft fortifies parquet margarine so that every pound contains 9,000 units of important vitamin A. So for real flavor enjoyment and good nutrition, too, buy parquet, P-A-R-K-A-Y. Don't just ask for margarine, ask for parquet, the quality margarine that's made by Kraft. This is the National Broadcasting Company.